grab around here. Yeah, I'm an engineer and I like to be exact. About a year and a half ago, I was thinking about getting some solar, so I made some spreadsheets to calculate exactly how much I'd need. First, I added up all my utility bills to see how much electricity I used over the last year. I was also planning on getting an electric car, so I made an estimate of how much electricity I'd need to charge that here at home. That's where I made my big mistake. Uh, so today, I'm gonna talk about what that was and how I fixed it. Now that I'm retired, I don't really drive a lot. Uh, my previous car, I drove about 3,000 miles a year, so I figured with a new car, maybe I'll go a little further. So I plugged in 4,000 miles. I estimated that I'd probably get about four miles per uh, kilowatt hour, so I would need an extra 1,000 kilowatt hours to go in addition to my 4,000 that I use in the house. To get that much solar, I would need about a 3.3 kilowatt system. Uh, it doesn't make too much sense to buy more solar than you can use because the utility company, SDG and E for my case, uh, they don't give you squat for any extra electricity. As a matter of fact, I mean that my solar system would cost me about six cents a kilowatt hour. And SDG and E is only gonna give you like 1.3 cents a kilowatt for anything extra you generate. So yeah, I didn't wanna have too many panels. Uh, if I didn't need to use them, it was just kind of a waste of money. My solar company that I ended up going with, they estimated that uh, yeah, I'd probably get about 111% of my usage. So I said, okay, I got a little bit of cushion, not too much, so it should be good. So in January of 2020, I signed a solar contract and put in a pre-order for my Tesla Model Y. I've had both the car and the solar system for about a year and a half now, but it was only a few months into it that I realized that, yeah, I made a big mistake. Once I had free energy from the sun, yeah, I couldn't get enough of it. I was like a kid in a candy store. I got my Tesla a couple of weeks before the solar was installed, and yeah, I liked driving it so much, I was taking it everywhere. Went to Colorado a couple of times to see my daughter. I was even taking my wife to the grocery store, uh, at least once in a while. Home charging is super convenient, but uh, anyway, once in a while we did have to go to a supercharger, so we tried to combine that with eating out for supper. We could pick up something to eat during COVID and just eat it in the car while the car was charging. There is one other energy use that I didn't know about before I got the car. It's called Phantom Drain. Phantom Drain is uh, any power that you're using while you're not driving. So for example, when I charge my car, the charging is about uh, say 95% efficient. Also, the EV battery will lose about 1% overnight just sitting there. And actually when I tried the sentry mode, I was using about 3% overnight. So yeah, I turned that off. I don't really need it. Also part of the Phantom Drain is any preheating or cooling you do to your car before you take it out for a drive. It's really nice to have a car that's air conditioned and ready to go, but uh, it does use a little more power. Over the course of a year, instead of 1,000 kilowatts electricity, I actually use 1,875 kilowatts just to charge the car. And also uh, superchargers, I used about 1,400 kilowatts. So yeah, some of that was on trips, but a lot of it was at home charging too. Second problem I ran in is too, too cheap to run air conditioning after 4 p.m. I didn't think I needed to. My wife disagreed. After four, the uh, sun was starting to go down. My solar production was really dropping off. And SD and g and &E was charging me 62 cents a kilowatt hour. So yeah, uh, I need to do something about that. If you have a fairly new system with microinverters like I have, uh, yeah, then upgrading uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. However, if you have an old system, you might have to uh, put a whole new system right next to your other one, uh, assuming you have roof space anyway. Uh, but my neighbor here behind me, yeah, they have an older system, uh, like 10 or 15 years old, uh, but the new higher power panels are not compatible with her inverters, so she had to replace them all, even though her inverters were still working fine. She has quite a bit of shading here, so she wants to get as much as she can from the sun when it's shining. Solar companies all have calculators to help you figure out how much power you're going to generate. My solar company estimated that I get about 5,300 kilowatt hours uh, per year uh, for my 10 panels. And I figured uh, my usage would be more like 4,800. So yeah, I should be pretty good and I should have it covered. After the first year, I found out that, uh, yeah, it must have been a sunny year because I got about 5,600 kilowatt hours of power. My usage was 5,850. However, even skipping all year long without using much air conditioning and charging, uh, I was only getting 96%, so yeah, I knew I needed to do something. I needed to add some more solar. I also wanted to get the panels on the west side of my roof, so 
yeah, that would give me a little more sun in the afternoon when they're in peak rates and hopefully enough to run some air conditioning for my wife. Couldn't find anybody that wanted to come out to uh, just add three more panels on here to my existing thing. However, Clint with Johnson Solar agreed to put in five high-powered panels. Now, my first 10 panels took like four months to get them installed. Uh, remember, this was during COVID with all the permits and application stuff, so it took a really long time. However, Clint was able to send his crew out the next day and they were done before lunchtime. So yeah, kudos to them. So if you're considering solar or adding on it, um, yeah, the most economical amount is just to get what you actually need. Uh, however, the calculating can be a little bit complicated and I did use an online calculator and I'll put a link in the, in the description below so you can do it too. That'll help you calculate pretty much uh, what you're gonna get from your solar panels based on your location and sun angles. However, in general, a good rule of thumb is, I would say probably about a, get about 130% of what you expect to be able to use. That'll allow you a little bit extra to uh, use more because you probably will want to. And also the panels do the grades a little bit over years. So yeah, you should have plenty then. The other consideration are electric cars. Uh, these panels are gonna last for 25 years and there's an excellent chance in the next 25 years, you'll be driving an electric car. I love mine, it works great. And I wouldn't go back to the gas models. So if you have to figure that in, they're gonna use quite a bit of power. A good rule of thumb there is figure maybe 350 watts, watt hours per mile. If you're gonna drive about 10,000 miles a year, you probably use 3,500 kilowatt hours. You can use that as a good rule of thumb. My five panels on the west, they're pretty much gonna provide all the power I need for my car. And the other 10 panels are enough to run my house and the air conditioning. So I think I'm good to go with that. Next up, I'm gonna replace my 20 year old air conditioner with a couple of mini split heat pumps. If you wanna see what that's going on, uh, yeah, get a notification or something. It's gonna take me a little while to get that done. Now it's time for my minute clinic, and that I'll show you exactly step by step how they actually put these extra five panels on my roof. Hi, my name is Clinton. I'm with Johnson Solar. This morning I'm here at a homeowner's place in Bonita, California. Um, he currently has a small system installed, wasn't quite meeting his needs. Very typical, uh, you know, a lot of sales organizations may undersize someone's system or size them at 100%, 110%. And oftentimes, once customers do solar, they end up using more energy, panels lose efficiency over time, so on and so forth. So this is quite common uh, nowadays that you'll see homeowners or they get an EV car and you're going to have to add solar panels um, to make up for that. So we're going to add five uh, 425 watt Q-cell panels over here with in-phase microinverters. We're going to use the 7A microinverter on, on, on this install. Um, that's the highest rated microinverter available on the market right now. So we'll have one row of five panels here. Um, with microinverters for the electrical tie-in we're going to try to tie in to his existing line set um so there's an array you know seven ten feet away here and so we're going to try to see if we can't pull another line set through there if not we'll end up running a new line set over to the main service panel which is not too far away
Yeah. I need you on the main with the other ladder and open up the little LB. No, it's getting stuck before here. Push it, Stevie. Huh? Push. Got it. Got it. Hold on. Okay. Hey. Okay, hey, electrical's all done. It's time to put the panels up. for like 10 minutes and then our system will kick in. Now the panels are all up. Only took them about three hours to put those five panels up and already I'm getting four kilowatts total from the system at noon, so it's all good.